the BBC Trust, which is your, essentially your headmaster, I mean the body that assesses the, the BBC, said in a report released uh, lately that especially, that specifically BBC One is not being creative enough. Yeah. Yeah, we had a d d delightful conversation about that. <laughs> well, the, the, one of the early founders of the BBC, an amazing man called Lord Reith, he, he described the mission of the BBC as three things, to inform, educate and entertain. Mm -hmm. And we take all three very seriously. Uh, we believe that the public pay for the BBC. They want the informa information, they want the news, they want the education, but actually they're paying for that in, uh, entertainment as well. So, so one of the things we're very, very obsessed at the BBC is the audience, the people who pay for us, and making sure we're offering lots to everyone who pays for us. When you look at, you know, across the Atlantic, you see Breaking Bad and Mad Men and, and, and things like that that are really, Sopranos even. Do you think maybe uh, you're not doing as well as you should have? So, I, we get asked this quite a lot actually by politicians as well. I don't know if you've been talking to David Cameron this morning. Um, Yesterday. Please send the Prime Minister my best wishes. The, the, um, and tell him to authorize the budget. And tell him to get on with things, yes. yeah. No, I, I, I think the... Um, if you don't mind me saying, the media can be a bit black or white about these mm -hmm. things. They can be, it must be this or it must be that. There are some terrific American shows, absolutely terrific American shows. There are some outstanding British dramas and comedies, as I'm sure, and I don't know as well, there are some outstanding dramas and comedies being made in, in Israel. Mm -hmm. And, and it, I think columnists, writers, they like to simplify, oversimplify things. As, this is great, this is not good. Actually, if you go to America, we are constantly told how great the BBC's work is. Uh, HBO tell us when the HBO started that they wanted HBO to be like the BBC and mm -hmm. to deliver that kind of content. We have a fantastic show called The Missing which has just been put in Variety's top 10, sh top ten shows of the year. It's a British show on American television. So yeah, but do you occasionally look at them and say, oh God, they have so much money. You know. Yeah, but it's not all about money. It's about yeah. storytelling. It's about mm -hmm. talent. It's about who you work with. Uh, money does make a difference, but uh, you know, a lot of the great Israeli uh, dramas that we made in the last few years, they have a tiny percentage of the budget of the Hollywood dramas. They're doing very well. Quite a lot of uh, Israeli dramas, as you know, are now being made mm -hmm. in the US. We've just bought one that we're going to adapt mm -hmm. in the UK on the BBC. So I don't think money is the only only thing. I think talent, storytelling, quality of the writers you're working with is is more important if not. I think people know the BBC for its quality but at the same time there's plenty of other people making great quality television. So you've got to just keep driving your standards, keep driving for quality, uh, trying to make people laugh, uh, trying to entertain them, try to educate them, uh, provide things that make them think mm -hmm. um, and hope that people want to keep watching your shows. The key will be how you deliver them in the future. Um, how much, can I ask you how much you hate ITV's Downton Abbey on a scale from one to ten? You know, one of the nice things for me about Downton Abbey is when I go to a lot of places they congratulate me on it. <laughs> Um, because they, um, they, they assume it's, the it's a BBC show. Right. And I, I'm never quite sure whether it's, oh, that's very kind of you, thank you very much, or, <laughs> or whether it be impolite to tell them. So sometimes I, I come clean, sometimes I don't. Uh, look, I, I think one of the great things about television is, as I said at the beginning, there's great things everywhere, and, we, and, and, and it, it can, it can open simplify to say, these people have got a monopoly on quality, these people have got a monopoly on... They don't. There's some great stuff being made in lots lots of different places. Mm -hmm. Downton Abbey has been a show which has driven us to, to you know, m try and make our drama better and better, more and more popular, uh, mm -hmm. because it's done a very good job. I, I like it, I watch it. Do you watch it? Not anymore. Not anymore. Oh, it's, yeah. got, it's gone off the boil. A little bit. Does Jump it? the shark, as you say in American it's jump the shark. jargon. Yeah. Quite simply, why do you need the public money to put on reality TV when commercial television would would be doing it anyway. The drama and the comedy is the most expensive thing, you know. They cost a lot more to produce than, than uh, unscripted programmes. So um, we spend more on those overall, but it doesn't mean you get more hours of them, they just cost more to produce. Definitely the television world is changing. And in a world where Netflix and Amazon are serious contenders, um, how, can you, how can you compete with that? Um, I, seriously, I think if you don't like change, you should go. I, I'm not you personally, um, because it's going to keep changing for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. it's, all, it's all changed so far. So, so what we've got to do is begin to predict how people are going to be watching television in the future. Mm -hmm. And as that generation grows out, and you see it with teenagers now, you know, they're watching television very, very differently to their parents. And we watch TV on our iPads and our laptops. Uh, so it's going to affect how we design our homes. Right. Uh, it's going to affect how we watch things, it's going to affect what kind of content we want. And unless you're really switched on to that and really engage with how television viewing habits are changing, you're going to get left behind. I can imagine that when you talk to Israelis and you say, I'm head of television BBC, one of the first things they say to you is, why are you against us? Because there yeah. is a feeling in this country that the BBC and the BBC News is, is very biased against Israel. Yeah, it, it's interesting and I do get that question a lot. Um, 
what's interesting for me, and standing back from it, because I, I don't have editorial involvement in it, is but I do see the BBC's complaints logs, um, which are lengthy every day. And, and, and when the Middle East and when Israel is in, in those complaints logs, you get 100 complaints about bias uh, against Israel and 100 complaints about bias uh, bias for Israel and people just watch things and they see different things mm -hmm. uh, does the BBC get every news report every minute of it and every second of the thousands of hours of content we produce every year absolutely right mm -hmm. no no news no broadcasting organization in the world would uh, do the teams work hard to ma maintain their objectivity I'd say yes mm -hmm. um, are we perfect no um, I I've never felt uh, so uncomfortable being a Jew in the UK as I felt in the last 12 months mm -hmm. um, and it's made us think about, you know, is it, is it our long-term home, actually? Because, because you feel it. I felt it in a way I've never felt before, actually. I, I, I don't know whether it's partly about the world we live in now, social media, uh, the speed with which people can contact you, uh, the way messages travel around the world so quickly now. Uh, but certainly, I, I think the uptick in uh, anti-Semitism, both in word and deed, has been mm -hmm. deeply troubling in the last 12 months. And, and you've seen the number of attacks rise. You've seen murders in France. You've seen murders in Belgium. Um, it's been it's been pretty grim actually, and 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 having lived all my life in the UK, I've never mm -hmm. felt as I do now about about anti-Semitism in Europe. To, to the extent that you're thinking about, you know, you, you will continue to live there, or or it's not. Well, I think we've probably woken up a couple of times in the last year. It's mm -hmm. calmed down a bit now. It's probably at its worst around protective edge, yeah. uh, where we thought this is this is not nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. this this doesn't feel good, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's settled down a bit now. But I, I, I do I do think there have been times where it being a Jew in in the UK in the last year has has been a, an uncomfortable feeling. Yeah. And this this is a good opportunity to ask you. We'll do the short short Israeli version, but movie, music. Oh book, one of each that you would take to a desert island? God. No, seriously, you haven't prepared this. Yourself. No, we haven't. <laughs> so I'm thinking, should I say the, I might go to the cartel after this, should I say the Bible first? Um, and then the complete works of William Shakespeare, so you're covered Shakespeare. everywhere, yeah. right? No, I, I, think, um, I think book I'd take Great Expectations. Dickens' Great Expectations, that's my favourite book. book. Uh, and I find I can read that again and again, and um, I adore that. Movie. I, I find it hard to think of like one great great movie because there's so many there's a lot of good movies around at the moment uh, I, I think my favorite movie of last year was probably wolf of wall street mm -hmm. rather than a, a, a specific one of all time I, I thought that deserved a bit more credit actually i thought that was an amazing piece of work amazing piece of directing and i, I thought that might get more plaudits than it did and music sevi mm. von sov 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 <laughs> My final question, sir, um, is basically what you want to do when you grow up. I mean, is it going to be Director General of the BBC and then rule no. the world, or rule the world, then Director General of the BBC? What is, I mean, your plans for the future? You're my a very plans, young man. My, well, I, I've got, as we were saying before, I've got a, a wife who's smarter than me. Yes, and, and has greater credentials than you, which and is pretty impressive, yes. When I sat down to meet Yonich now with my wife, that was the first thing she said, and I said, don't worry, I'm very used to this. <laughs> um, uh, and I think partly be what Narina wants to do and where she wants to be will, will drive quite a lot of my decision making. Um, I think we'd like to work in America at some point, um, but we haven't made any firm plans. Um, I, I, I like being involved in television. <laughs> so as long as, as long as I'm doing that, I think I'll be happy. But I'll, I'll need a new challenge at some point in the, in the future, and uh, that might be in the UK or the US. So we said uh, US rule the world and then go back home. Okay. Well, let, I'll, I'll leave that with you. Danny Cohen, thank you thank so you much, much for coming today. Thank you. Thanks.